and thank you everyone for joining us via Skype and via phone. Uh, just another reminder, if you have uh, accidentally unmuted your microphone, please go ahead and mute it again. We want to make sure that everyone can hear and uh, can um, understand and get their questions answered. So it is my pleasure to be here today to talk with you about Health United States 2018, uh, the annual report, and the year-round resource. Uh, just to give you a quick idea of what we'll be talking about today, I'll briefly go over the Health United States report, um, the sections of the report, in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, although there are many topics covered in Health US, I will be I will be uh, looking just at some themes from the Health US report um, today. Uh, we'll be exploring just a couple of themes today, uh, but just so you know that there are uh, many subjects available in the report. Um, I'll also be going over how Health US can be a resource for you throughout the year, and we'll be looking through a couple of different um, part of our uh, suite of products that you can use for your own research and your own work. And then finally, um, after a Q&A session where you can ask us some questions. I'll be turning the tables and asking you to provide some feedback about how you use Health United States. A quick overview of the National Center for Health Statistics. We are one of the 13 federal statistical agencies. We are the nation's principal health statistics agency. Our mission as part of our, uh, our role as a health statistical agency is to provide accurate, timely, and relevant information to help identify and address health issues. As a statistical agency, we often are not able to answer the why questions, why is something happening, but we are an authoritative source of what is happening. Our reports and publications have to be objective and statistically valid. We have many report types that you might be familiar with, from data briefs, which are shorter reports that uh, often are looking at a single question in a single point of time, as well as longer series reports that are filled with analytic and methodologic details. Health United States is the flagship report of the National Center for Health Statistics. NCHS has uh, several different data collection programs uh, that you may be familiar with, and each of these are featured at one point or another in the Health United States program. The National Vital Statistics System is the source for all things birth and death statistics, and, uh, and we'll see data featured from, from this particular data collection system in Health US in a little bit. The National Health Interview Survey is a large, ongoing, uh, in-person, household-based survey that collects information on health behaviors, health conditions, and healthcare utilization. The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, also called NHANES, is a nationwide, nationally representative, objective measurement survey focusing on the ability to collect measurements such as blood pressure and cholesterol and one of the premier sources of nutrition information in the country. The National Healthcare Surveys is actually a whole family of surveys, of establishment surveys, that look at utilization among hospitals, ambulatory care centers, physicians' offices, as well as long-term care facilities. The National Survey of Family Growth is a nationally representative survey that focuses on the health behaviors that are key to family formation and growth. In addition to these major data collection programs, NCHS fulfills its mission by conducting additional targeted surveys, as well as through its data linkage program, where select surveys, data from select surveys, are linked to other administrative data sources, such as the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Health United States has a report mandate. We are a congressionally mandated report from the Secretary of Health and Human Services to the President and Congress. And we have been published by the National Center for Health Statistics since 1975. The legislative mandate uh, tells us to have a report that covers four major subject areas, health status and determinants, healthcare utilization, healthcare resources, and healthcare expenditures and payers. We have one overarching large report goal, which is to educate and inform the public and policymakers on key health topics. We have three major ways that we try to achieve that goal. The first is really in bringing together health information from multiple data sources. Thinking about all those different NCHS data collection systems that I just showed you, certainly each of these are featured in the Health United States report. But we also bring together health information from other CDC sources, 
other HHS sources, other sources from uh, outside of Health and Human Services, and even some private data sources. Another key focus of Health United States is the focus on trends over time. It's not enough to bring you the latest content, the latest health content that can help uh, in your research or in understanding policies. We also want to provide the context. What are the patterns? How are these health indicators changing uh, during, during the years? And finally, another key feature of the Health United States report is that this report really examines health disparities between important population subgroups. We have a long history in Health United States in being able to be a useful report in understanding uh, differences not only by race and Hispanic origin, but also across income groups uh, and regions, as well as other uh, geographies. Thinking specifically about the Health United States 2018 annual report, we have not just the overall omnibus large big book that you might be familiar with if you're a consistent Health US user, but really a whole suite of products. The first main section is the chart book on the health of Americans. This chart book this year features 20 figures along with analytic text. Now, most of these figures deal with data between 2007 and 2017. Obviously, in cases where the data aren't collected uh, as recently as 2007, we'll uh, start at a more recent year. But we do go through 2017. I want to uh, acknowledge that, that these data, in some cases, can, uh, can be older. And one of the reasons for that is, again, thinking about the very large collection of data collection systems that we're working with, um, each of those data collection systems, the public use files and estimates, uh, become available at different points during the year. So we do have to make a, a cutoff point as we pull the data together for publication. And so in, for the Health US 2018, uh, the most recent year for many of these figures is 2017. We also have the highlights in the chart book, and usually these highlights are shorter snippets drawn specifically from the analytic text. Uh, they often focus on the most recent year's data, which in many cases is 2017, or on simple comparisons, perhaps an increase over time or a decrease, or simple comparisons between subgroups that were analyzed uh, in the figures. In addition to this chart book, we also have supplementary online-only trend tables for those users who might be interested in obtaining more detail than they were able to see as part of the chart book. Now, in some cases, these longer these are dealing with longer-term trends, and especially looking at our vital statistics data collection. Uh, these estimates go back to the 1950s and 1960s. And in other cases, where we perhaps were only presenting a figure by sex, or by age group, it's an opportunity for users to look at these estimates among more detailed population groups, not just sex and age group, but also race and Hispanic origin, or income, or geography. The appendices are a little bit of an unsung hero of the Health US annual report. They're a very important part of uh, being able to obtain details and descriptions of the data sources and the methodology. If you are interested in looking more at NCHS microdata and want to understand more about how a key health indicator was constructed, um, or understanding how the questions may have changed over time, the appendices are an excellent source of that particular kind of information. And a little bit newer for the Health US program, we are working on more social media friendly visuals. These include some shareable images to help communicate the highlights, as well as more uh, visually friendly, visually focused spotlight infographics that are available on our website. Today I'll be going through just a few of the themes from the Health US 2018 annual report. And again, noting that there are many uh, subjects that are covered in the report, but I'll be showcasing today data from 10 charts and tables illustrating the following kinds of trends. Decreases in life expectancy and the impact of changing mortality rates. Changes in healthcare access and utilization among adults and children. And then finally, continuing disparities between demographic and geographic groups. I'll start with life expectancy and mortality, drawing specifically from four charts and tables on life expectancy, drug overdose death rates, suicide rates, and heart disease death rates. Life expectancy at birth in the U.S. has been increasing or remaining the same every year between 1994 and 2014, and it's been in decline for the two of the past three years. 
Life expectancy at birth is one of the fundamental measures of population health. It allows us to compare the health and longevity of a population, not only uh, across time to be able to see whether we are improving the health of a population, but also internationally. What we've seen is that in the past few years, since 2015, we've seen significant decreases in life expectancy among men, while life expectancy at birth has actually remained stable among women. One of the key features of life expectancy at birth is that changes in the mortality rates, especially at younger ages, can have a significant impact on the ultimate life expectancy. One of the um, key health areas that has impacted the life expectancy at birth in this country, uh, the decrease, and specifically focusing on the decreases in life expectancy, is the uh, increased death rate for drug overdose. We've seen drug overdose increase substantially between 2007 and 2017, uh, with increases from 11.9 to 21.7 deaths per 100,000. When we break those drug overdose death rates out by sex and also by age group, what you can see is that we're seeing significant increases among males, particularly, and especially among males in younger age groups. And again, noting that increases in mortality rates, especially among those younger age groups, are going to be seen as decreases in average life expectancy. Another topic that has gotten a lot of attention as being a key player in the decreases in life expectancy are suicide rates. One of the things that we were able to show this year in our trend table, an online-only supplemental trend table, is the death rates for suicide, and for the first time, being able to break out the 10 to 14-year-old age group, going all the way back to 1950. And here, in this trend table, you can see the increases in the suicide rates for many of the age groups. Now, the increases in the mortality rates for the younger age groups are certainly a component of the decreasing life expectancy, but another important component is the fact that we have seen uh, areas where there has been traditionally a decline in the mortality rates, so an improvement in health and longevity, um, actually stabilizing. This is a figure from the chart book showing mortality rates from the two leading causes of death in the U.S., heart disease and cancer, in decline since 2007. However, specifically, the rate of decrease for heart disease has actually slowed between 2011 and 2017. So where the decreases in, in mortality rate due to heart disease may have been offsetting the increases in mortality in, in other areas, uh, where because of this slowing, we're starting to see the impacts on life expectancy. Shifting gears a little bit to one of our other key focus areas, I'll also talk a little bit about the themes of access and utilization. I'll be focusing specifically on charts and tables that look at insurance status among adults and children, delay or non-receipt of prescription drugs due to cost, prescription drug use overall, and childhood vaccination. The percentage of adults aged 18 to 64 who are uninsured was down to 13.3% in 2018. 6.3 percentage points lower than 2007. This decrease in the uninsured rate was uh, complemented by increases in coverage in terms of both private coverage as well as Medicaid and other public coverage. One thing to note that while the data from, from the chart book were preliminary at the time of uh, collating these data, the final 2018 estimates are available through the NHIS early release program at the URL on your screen. Health insurance impacts many parts of our health care utilization and health outcomes, in particular focusing here on information from one of our long-term trend tables. We can see that in 2017, the percentage of adults age 18 to 64 who delayed or did not get needed prescription drugs due to cost actually differed by insurance coverage status. Among adults who reported private health insurance, uh, just under 4% said that they delayed or did not get the prescription drugs they needed due to cost. That rose when we were looking at adults who had Medicaid or other public coverage to 9.4%. And among adults aged 18, to 60, aged 18 to 64 years who were uninsured, almost 17% said that they had delayed or did not get prescription drugs due to cost. Uh, if we look at how many people this impacts, what's the burden of this issue 
Um, we can also look at how many people report taking prescription drugs. Now, this is, it does shift us to a different data source. This is from the NHANES, and these data are from 2015 and 2016. Um, but here we see that one in eight people, 12.5%, used five or more prescription drugs in the last 30 days. And if we actually look at the, actually look at the chart book text, we can see that it's actually just under half, 48% of people report taking at least one prescription drug in the last 30 days. Looking at children, we can also see that the percentage of children under age 18 who had no health insurance decreased 3.8 percentage points uh, to 5.2% in 2018. And similarly, we then saw increases in both the uh, proportion of, with private coverage as well as Medicaid or other public coverage. What kind of health insurance you have matters for utilization among children. What we see through the National Immunization Survey is that childhood vaccinations in fact differ uh, by these different insurance categories. So among children who had private coverage, private health insurance coverage, uh, who were aged 19 to 35 months, we found that three quarters of those with private coverage had completed the seven, the recommended seven vaccine series. Among children who had Medicaid, 66.5% completed the seven vaccine series. Among children who were uninsured, 48.5% completed the vaccine series. And taking us to the last of the three themes that we're exploring today, let's look at continuing disparities. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, most of the trend tables that we have are able to look at these key health indicators by a number of different demographic and geographic subgroups. I'm just looking at two today. I'm looking at teen births among females aged 15 to 19 years and vaccination coverage among children 19 to 35 months. One thing we note from the chart book is that the birth rate among teenagers aged 15 to 19 fell by more than one half from 41.5 per 1,000 females in 2007 to 18.8 live births per 1,000 females in 2017. This was a record low for the United States. However, throughout that period, the disparities by race and Hispanic origin persisted. So I think it is important for us to be able to recognize that even in the in a place of public health success that we still have to examine the disparities that may exist. Again, I think it's important to note that the 2018 teen birth rates are available at the URL that's on your screen. Not only can we look at disparities by racial and Hispanic origin, but also by region and by different geographic variables. Uh, one geographic variable that is definitely of interest to many is urban and rural uh, disparities. In this particular analysis, we looked at we found that children who were living outside of metropolitan statistical areas, that is, children who were living in more rural environments, were less likely to have received the complete combined vaccination series than those living in the metropolitan statistical area of principal cities. So they are uh, in the more urban areas. That brings us to the conclusion of the three themes that we are exploring for the Health US 2018 report. And I hope that you will go into the report and find, the, uh, find and access the data that you are looking for to tell the stories that you need to tell through data. But I also want to encourage you to continue to use Health US as a year-round resource. We think of Health US as being a spectrum of products, not only the uh, single chart book, but really being able to appeal to uh, a number of different kinds of users casual user who might be interested in just obtaining a quick statistic, perhaps for a paper or to guide them uh, along, along a research path, a more sophisticated user who might be more interested in assessing patterns, whether that's over time or whether those are statistical comparisons between subgroups, and then finally an in-depth user who might be more interested in putting together their own analyses using our trend tables or interested in working with NCHS microdata, uh, the public use files from the NCHS data collection systems, and wants to understand how we have put together our key health indicators. To help you understand a little bit more about what I mean, I'm going to use functional limitation as an example indicator to help step through these different parts of Health US. Before we get started, let's define what I mean by functional limitation. 
For those of you who are not familiar, the Washington Group on Disability Statistics was first formed by the UN Statistical Commission in 2001 to help create tools that allowed for the collection of internationally accurate comparable statistics on individuals living with functional limitations. These standard questions were able to be added to international censuses and surveys. This short set of questions assesses functioning in six different domains, vision, hearing, mobility, upper body functioning, communication, and cognition. And some of the features of the Washington Group short set on functioning, short question set on functioning uh, that we use in our analyses are the ability to first look at either a composite or domain specific kind of limitation where we can either talk about people who have uh, functional limitations or people who have limitations in the area of vision. And we can also look not only at a yes, no, black, white um, sense of limitations, but also be able to say whether there is a look at the continuum of difficulty levels. Questions on functional limitation were first added to the sample adult section on the National Health Interview Survey in 2010. We can start off where our in-depth user might start, taking a look at the appendix. Again, as I noted, the appendix is a place where you could go to understand what the question looked like on a survey, and how these data were collected, as well as how the question may have changed over time. This is just the start of the functional limitation entry as part of our appendix. The casual user might just be interested in a quick highlight. What is the percentage of people who have functional limitation in the most recent time period that was available in the book? Uh, here in our functional limitation highlight, we can see that in 2017, the percentage of adults who were age 18 to 64 who reported having difficulty in functioning was 33.7%, which is, can be further decomposed along that continuum of, of functional limitation. Our more sophisticated user might be interested in looking at the figure in the chart book as well as the analytic text to get a sense of how these patterns have been changing over time uh, to be able to see specifically, for example, that the proportion of adults age 18 and 64 who had a lot of difficulty or cannot do it all uh, in at least one domain increased by 0.3 percentage points between 2010 and 2014. Finally, the in-depth user might be interested in looking at the trend tables. Now, for those of you who are used to the paper version of the Health US book, uh, who like to look at the index as a way to get a sense of where to find their uh, topic of interest, uh, the data finder is also an electronic index. You can go to the subjects and select from the drop-down menus. In this case, we'll look at functional limitation. You can see that we can look both at the figure that's in the chart book as well as the more detailed trend table. Here I've pulled up the trend table in Excel. You can see that we are looking at table 15. You can see that we're looking across multiple years and that we are able to look at multiple ways of uh, decomposing this indicator, both in the number of millions of people who are reporting specific levels of difficulty, uh, total age adjusted estimates, and total current estimates. You may have decided to pull together a different graphic, but what I pulled together in just a few minutes using that Excel table is a bar chart looking at the percentage of adults age 18 and older between 2010 and 2017 uh, who reported these different levels of difficulty. One of the things that's appealing about using the Excel to do this is that I've actually chosen to look at a completely different population than was chosen for the chart book. I'm looking here at 18 and older instead of at the 18 and 64 and 65 and older populations. So if you were interested in looking at functional limitation or another key health indicator by sex or by race and Hispanic origin or by income, the trend tables are the place to do that. I hope at this point that you uh, would agree with me that you have these two, two main takeaways from our conversation thus far. Uh, the first is that Health US 2018 is an annual report on the nation's health that can provide key content and context. Uh, the specific examples that we talked through were on life expectancy, access to utilization, as well as disparities. But of course, I do want to leave you with uh, the fact that Health US 2018 can be a year-round resource where you can use this to quickly research health topics. And we hope that the suite of products are accessible to casual, sophisticated, as well as in-depth users. And here, let's for questions. Yes, uh, if, if 
you would like uh, to ask a question, uh, we recommend using the chat feature. Um, we had one question about whether there's any 2018 data in the report. Um, uh, so we'll have Dr. Gindy respond to that. Thanks, Jeff. Yes, there is some 2018 data in the report. Uh, you can find 2018 data specifically in the health insurance chart and tables because those data were available, um, or the health insurance charts, those data were available in a preliminary way at the point where we were uh, collating the data for this report. 2018 data are also available for the youth, uh, youth smoking and uh, tobacco use uh, because those data were available at the time of the report. Otherwise, for the most part, our more recent data are going to be from 2017. There is a second question about uh, some of the trend tables in the report um, about, uh, that aren't in this most recent version, uh, in particular table on the trends in homicide in the U.S. That. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for that question. And that is something that I think that people who have been uh, longer time, longer term users of the Health US report will uh, will notice that their tables that they're used to uh, did not get updated this year. So in the Health US 2017 report, we had 114 different trend tables covering. I think it was about 85 different subjects. Um, one of the things that we are trying to do, um, as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, this report has been put out by NCHS since 1975, and the report really has not fundamentally changed very much in its structure um, since that time. Um, we know that the ways that people get their health information and health statistical information is changing, and so we really are trying to make sure that we can redesign our product in such a way that to make the information more accessible to users. Some people are interested in using data for data visualization uh, or other um, more um, internal products, so ways that they can take information, not just where we've given it to them in a chart, but take the information themselves and, and use it. Um, so while we are starting to get at that through the data finder and through through the data finder and um, through these trend tables, we are um, working hard on redesign and, and actually We'll actually flip ahead to let you know that as part of our redesign, we are reaching out to our data users. Um, we are trying to get feedback from all of you to hear about uh, what you think of Health US, what um, what you are looking for in the product. Um, to be quite honest, we're also really looking to find out uh, who you are. Um, we know that our report is geared towards policymakers. Um, but we also know that the report gets used. We also know that the report gets used um, by public health professionals and academics, uh, but we are interested in knowing more about who you are and what you're, what you're looking for. Um, feel free to look at the uh, link on your screen um, to tell us more about how you use Health US. We have another question um, asking about a specific statistic. Uh, the statistic, one in eight people use five or more prescription drugs, and whether or not this applies to the nation or is it broken down by insurance company? That, that's a good question. Thank you for bringing it up because uh, I did present that right after a slide that looked at health insurance coverage. So the statistic on one in eight people using five or more prescription drugs is for the nation as a whole. Um, uh, and uh, But you can actually look for additional information um, to break it down by a number of different uh, subgroups uh, in that data finder. So if you go back to the, if you go to the data finder on the Health US website, um, looking specifically at prescription drug use coverage, then you can um, look at the trend table and look along the uh, rows along the side to look for health insurance coverage. Okay, and then there was a question about whether in the report there is uh, diabetes rate data uh, somewhere in the report, rate of diabetes. So we do have diabetes prevalence data, which looks at the percentage of the population. Um, there is a chart on that, and again, in that 
same uh, same vein of an answer. Uh, if you go to the data finder and look for diabetes, you can look for the specific chart that we have available as well as um, tables. Uh, and then when you look at the diabetes prevalence, um, one of the things, because this is from that Haynes survey, which does objective measurements, we're actually able to base this not just on self-reported diabetes, which is, of course, an, um, an important um, indicator as well, but actually looking at the, uh, the rate of uh, diet where we can uh, look at the, the measurements to uh, let see whether somebody would be classified as having diabetes or not. Um, we are able to look at uh, total diabetes as well as whether or not someone has already received a diabetes diagnosis from their physician as well as the prevalence of undiagnosed diabetes. And then there's another question here which you partially addressed. Um, the question is how often is this updated? Traditionally, it's been an annual report, and I guess uh, I'll let you expand on that. Um, so the annual, so Health US has traditionally been an annual report. There have been some years where we have combined two years worth of data collection to make a, a single report, but for the most part, uh, this report does come out annually. Now we do have some other ways of dealing. With, um, with updated data. In some year, years, we've actually looked at uh, trying to update the data uh, throughout the year when there are more data available. Um, another thing that we have been trying is to use the Spotlight infographics. Again, this was another part of the suite of products from Health US where we are looking at topics that are dealt with in Health United States and using the most updated data available to take a, a slightly different look at that topic. So for example, our most recent spotlight infographic is on racial and ethnic disparities in uh, heart disease. And so even we were able to take the most updated data from the National Health Interview Survey from and Haynes, as well as vital statistics, uh, pulling them all together, looking at racial and ethnic disparities uh, in, using the most recent data. Uh, then, um in the past, there's been a special feature, special topics. Uh, there was not one this time. Is there any plans in the future to uh, incorporate a special feature into this? Yes. So there was no special feature this year for the Health US 2018 report. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we are trying to do as part of our redesign is. Uh, actually do some redesign activities where we're looking um, at getting a lot of input from different stakeholders. Um, one of the things that we did have to make sure that in order to put out any report this year that we were able to, um, to pull aside some of the, uh, the work that would normally have been done in order to focus on redesign. Uh, and so there was no special feature for 2018. Uh, that all the questions so far. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, at this time, if anyone would like to uh, ask a question, uh, we can un unmute the mic and um, feel free. Okay, I think that's about it. Uh, we, we thank everybody for attending this uh, webinar on Health United States. And again, if you have any uh, questions you think of later or any follow-up, please uh, contact us at that email address again, paoquery at cdc.gov. Uh, thanks very much for uh, joining us today.